I didn't realize that Good Smile made a Darth Vader Nendoroid until I saw it available on Kijiji Used. I had to pick it up immediately since Darth Vader is my favorite villain ever. I also picked up the Stormtrooper along with Darth Vader, but that will be a separate review in the future. The box states specifically that this is the Episode 4 A New Hope version of Vader. Though I don't think they made any other versions of Darth Vader. Maybe they're planning for the future. The figure comes in a standard sized Nendoroid box with clear windows and photos of the various poses you can put him into. Vader doesn't come with many accessories and no other face plates. I guess that makes sense since he's wearing a mask. The figure comes with a set of open hands, which looks the closest to the choking move in the movie, a set of closed fists, a set of gripping hands for the beam saber, and a single pieced, double handed lightsaber holding hand. Of course, there's a beam saber included, where it has the clear red beam section, and that piece can come off to fit in the double handed pose. The handle has a tab in it so it can stay securely in the gripping hands. He comes with two capes, one in a fixed pose that is already on the figure, and one which has two movable sections on the back to create a dynamic look. We also get an extra neck joint, a mini Death Star, a Death Star stand arm, and the usual Nendoroid stand. The helmet looks good compared to the movie photos, and I appreciate that it's made with a semi-glossy plastic instead of the super glossy plastic, since it would be a nightmare for fingerprints and keeping it clean. Though I think the sticklers will complain that it should be super glossy to be accurate to the movie. I like that the eye section is made from glossy plastic, which gives it a nice highlight and makes the eyes look alive, even though it is just part of the mask. There's mesh detail molded into the mouth part, which is a nice touch. The top part of the helmet is a separate piece, and weirdly, there's some hidden gold mechanical details under the headpiece. And the front face part can also come off as well, which implies to me that Good Smile was thinking about giving different faces, or at least reusing the sculpt in the future. Maybe for an episode 6 version of Vader with a scar face included? The suit has very good molded detail, with the fabric vertical lines over his arm and gloves. However, I think the glove section should have had the lines perpendicular to the bicep area. The lights and the buttons on his chest and belt are well detailed. Comparing to photos and the Hot Toys figures, there are differences in the color of the lights and buttons, but the photos of Vader within the same movie seem to be slightly different anyway, so I can't complain. There's also a chain molded and painted around his neck, but it seems to be too exaggerated on the figure for my taste. The back actually has some pretty nicely molded details and painting, but it will be covered up by the cape. I appreciate that Good Smile went to the trouble of doing this though. Both the capes are well done. The static one is helpful to keep Vader standing up without the stand, but limits his posing. The posable cape is a good compromise to allow for some posability and looks decent from most angles except directly from behind. It has two separate posable pieces and two very small ball joints. One of the ball joints on mine is loose and keeps popping out. Vader has the long skirt-like section replicated just under the belt. But in the movie screenshots, there should be a long cardigan-like top that goes over his top part as well, which this figure did not replicate. It's easy to tell because the long cardigan thing should be covering the left and right side of his chest armor. The legs have the fabric vertical lines molded in as well, and I like how the boots are molded in the glossy plastic to give it the right look. But I noticed that the vertical lines continued onto the boot, which I think is incorrect. The head is on a ball joint, and it gives full rotation side to side. It has a good amount of tilt down, and a small amount of tilt up. The shoulder is on a ball joint, which is super tight on mine, and allows for a pretty good range of motion. Next you have the peg joint at the bicep area, which allows the arm to rotate in and out. This part is super loose on my figure. There's an elbow joint which allows the forearm to go up around 90 degrees. The hands are on a simple peg joint to allow for other hands to be swapped in, but mine is super tight. It allows a 360 degree swivel. Overall, the arms are very poseable for such a small figure. The waist is actually on a ball joint and allows 360 degree rotation just above the belt. There's very little front and back tilt though. At the legs, the crotch area has a ball joint, but it's super tight and doesn't allow for much front and back movement. 
nor rotation inward or outward. It does allow a decent amount of leg spread though. The knee joint is nice and allows a good amount of bend backwards. The foot I believe is on a small ball joint and gives good foot rotation, but not much pivoting. This is a very poseable figure for the Nendoroid series, and it's my favorite character from Star Wars, so it's a must-buy for me. Though, things like the super loose bicep peg joints and the cape ball joints could be tighter, whereas areas like the hand peg joint, the shoulder ball joints could be looser. It just makes deposing the figure a bit of a chore. At the MSRP of around 50 bucks, I'd say it's a no-brainer for Star Wars and Vader fans. At the current eBay prices of around 100 Canadian dollars though, as a figure, you can definitely do better. <laughs>